And eventually he did say to Andrew, Do you not think that the Son of God, the Creator, has power? Video 2, Arrival of the Messiah in Israel. Of course, that's at the birth of Christ. He's the Messiah. As I have said before, he will never appear again in any Israel on earth as Messiah, as King, as a human, under any condition whatsoever, the Lord Jesus Christ will never appear on this earth again. Praise the Lord. Why would he come? It's not foretold that he will come. There's no verse in the whole of the Bible that says he's going to return to Jerusalem, to Israel on this earth. Not one verse. So all the hundreds of millions of people who believe he will are chasing a will of the wisp. They're chasing a, a demonic doctrine, which I followed once. But I left it because I found the truth. So here he is lying in a manger. But for, before that time, the wise men had come from the east. It does not say there were three. Wise men came from the east, from a heathen country from a country that followed black magic because they had been told that the king of Israel, not the king of the Jews, that's, a, that's false in the King James Version and in any other version if it says that. There was no word Jews. He was never the king of the Jews, ever. He was the king of Israel. David was never the king of the Jews. David was never a Jew. David was king of Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ came to be king of Israel. And so the wise men said, where is he? Where is he born? And of course, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes already knew that it was recorded in Daniel 9, the turn of events that would occur. And they had already calculated they weren't silly. They had already calculated it was about time he came. Anybody could calculate it. It's easy. If people only follow what the Bible says, which many do not do. Because years ago, when I studied the whole subject as a teenager, I remember there were at least two periods, two dates that people were following so I just said, oh, I'll follow what the Assemblies of God follows. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know the difference. You see, that's what we all do. We follow our denomination. We're supposed to follow the Bible. And so they said, oh, yes, he's to be born in Bethlehem. They knew. So the wise men went looking for him. And Herod was scared witless. He was a kind of a king. And he was not an Israelite as such. He was of Israel, but he was an Edomite. And many Edomites had come with John Hyrcanus into the land some time previously, and they filled Judea, Edomites. But they were considered to be Israel. There are no Edomites left today. I say that because too many people are following certain prophetical words in uh, the, some of the prophets. They misunderstand them. They misunderstand the fact that it's all finished for Edom. They think Edom still exists and that those prophecies of her good that were given about Esau still maintain. No, they do not. If you can show me any people in any country who are doing better than any other, let me tell you it won't be the Edomites. I'll tell you who it will be. The Khazars, the Kabul, the deep state, who've been running the world for a long, long, long time. The neocons. So we then realized that there were shepherds out in the field. The glory of the Lord shone all around. 
the birth of the elect could never occur without glory from heaven accompanying him. Never. The shepherds were enveloped in the glory of the Lord that shone all around them. They were enveloped in it. Isn't that wonderful? They heard the angel above them, probably saw him, and went looking for him and found him in a cave. The wise men were there. Glory filled the cave. You should read the last book that concerns the birth of Jesus Christ and by it. Glory all around. Glory all around. There's an amazing portrayal of the glory of heaven mostly one can find in the ascension of Isaiah. The elect God and the Holy Spirit are up in the seventh heaven full of glory worshipped by angels in that seventh heaven as indeed they were worshipped from the sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second and first. But up in the seventh the angels were there before them. Now how, how God communicated with the angels at each level, we do not know and we're not told. There are many things about heaven and God that it is impossible for us to know or understand. And so in the book of the Ascension of Isaiah, he ascended up there. He ascended up there. We read how that the elect one was told to come down to earth. So he descends from the seventh to the sixth heaven. When he arrives at the sixth heaven, he takes on the form of an angel of the angels in the sixth heaven. And they are worshipping God. He joins them. Then he descends to the sixth heaven and descends and humbles himself to a lower form of angel. And this happens to the fifth, to the fourth, to the third, to the second, to the first. He altered his appearance. As indeed, he altered his appearance. We read in the last book about Andrew. He appeared as a sailor. And eventually he did say to Andrew, Do you not think that the Son of God the Creator has power, has not got power to change himself into whatever form he wishes, because after all he's Creator of persons, and so he had this change. It conforms totally with Philippians 2. And I love that song, Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Saviour came, and Jesus was his name. In Philippians 2, we are told that he humbled himself. I'm re reading the LHB translation, but uh, that doesn't mean to say I think it's the best, but it's better than the King James. Verse 6 who being in the form of God did not think it robbery to be equal with God. He was equal with God. He was up there in the seventh heaven, equal with God, but made himself of no reputation while he was in the form of God. He's still God. He descends from the seventh heaven to the sixth seventh as God equal with God, but made himself of a lower reputation by appearing as the angels of the sixth heaven. And so he did in the fifth, fourth, third, second and first heavens. Then he comes to earth as God. 
and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men because his humanity was created. As God, he is not created, he is creator. As man, his humanity was created to be like ours, it says in the book of Hebrews. He was made in all points like us, as men, as people, not as sinners, as people. And he was made in the likeness of men. So here is God, the elect, who has descended seven times and then to earth to be born in the womb of Mary in the likeness of men. Still God. I read in one of the last books of the Bible that he, ascended, he descended into the womb of Mary through her ear. Now to me that makes sense. How else would he have got into the womb of Mary? Did he make a hole in the stomach and go in? Of course not. He was not impregnated naturally. The only way he could have ever gone in was through her ear. And you know why? Because the angel came to her, Gabriel, and told her that he was to be born in her. She heard all the news he wanted to give her about the birth of the Saviour through her ear. And her response was, let it happen just as you say, angel, obedience, submission. She submitted to the will of God, totally, because she heard it through her ear. So, of course, how does Christ enter her body? Not through the lower parts. Through her ear, that can hear, and makes the connection through her spirit, and through her soul that is housed in her body. And many do say that the soul is down there low and the spirit, of course, is joined to the mind of Christ in us and is joined to the soul. I believe that that really happened. He found himself in fashion as a man. It says he was found in fashion. And this is what JMNT says. He was discovered, or he was to be seen, or to he was to be found in appearance as a man. That's what happened. Uh, uh, the King James, of course, is not as clear as that. So he humbled himself. And he changed in his descent from the seventh heaven till he ended up going through the ear of Mary as God to appear in her womb to allow himself to be encased in the growth in her womb of the man he was to be, created by God and created by the Spirit. Now whether Christ himself had anything to do with the creation, I do not know. What a wondrous story, bringing us redemption. My God and Saviour came, and Jesus was his name when he was born. Amen. And I love that song, Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Saviour came and Jesus was his name.